hello guys welcome back to life technologies and thank you for watching uh, this is a continuation of our ipiran training series we've covered part one where we did basic configuration of isis and part two we covered how to do cost planning and configuration just to be able to control how traffic flows in the network and then in part three we covered how to do route import between access and aggregation processes so that we can achieve end-to-end -end connectivity in this part four we are focusing on how to implement authentication for SIS protocol and this one brings in the security factor nowadays network security is something that you cannot ignore you need to factor in the security of your network when you are doing implementation so uh, when we are doing authentication we are improving the network security in a way that no one will just come with a device configure it configure SIS without knowing the authentication keys and then that JSON will come up and he will be able to get the routes from SIS protocol so when we are doing authentication we are trying to improve the security of our network the protocol that are running on our network that is so when we talk of isis authentication we can do classification based on different criteria the first criteria is doing classification based on packet types where we can have three classes the first one is interface authentication where we are doing the authentication configuration under under the interface so you just specify the authentication parameters on each and every interface that is running SIS. So if you are configuring interface authentication, one thing that you need to put into consideration is you must use the same password on interconnected interfaces. So the second classification is area authentication. This one you are doing you are configuring authentication in the ISIS view and this one will authenticate level 1 CSNMPs and PSNMPs and LSPs so similarly to interface authentication when you have area authentication you also have to ensure that you are using the same authentication mode and keychain for the different areas on different routers on all the device that is that are in one area then uh, the third classification is routing domain authentication. This one is also configured in the ISIS view. And this one authenticates level 2 CSNMPs, PSNMPs, and LSPs. So yeah, if you are also doing the routing domain authentication, you must have the same authentication mode and the keychain configured for it to work normally. So uh, another scenario, another criteria that we can do classification is based on the authentication mode of the packets. So the first one is symbol authentication. Symbol authentication means a password is directly added to packets for authentication. And this one we are just using the plain text. So we are not doing any hashing. And this one is insecure because any user who has access to the configuration or who can do packet capture is able to see the password that is configured. So when we log into the device, we can do this lab just to verify that yeah, you are able to see the password that is configured. Then the second part is message digest algorithm. Five with this is MD5 authentication. So when you are using MD5 authentication, the password is hashed using the MD5 algorithm. And then the ciphertext password is added to packets for authentication. So this is more secure because we are not able to see the plain text password that was configured on the router. And this is the one that we'll be using in our lab. Then we have the third type, which is the keychain authentication. So instead of just using MD5 or SIM authentication, you have the key, the security key that you configure. And this one changes with time. So it's more secure even compared to MD5 and SIM authentication. Then we have HMAG SHA-256 authentication. So this one is hashed using the HMAG SHA-256 algorithm. And then password is added to the packets for authentication, the ciphertext password that is 
So uh, the last three, the MD5, Keychain Authentication, and HMAC, they are more secure. And when you are configuring authentication in your network, you should use these three and avoid using the plain text, which can be easily be seen by the attacker who is trying to check your network or maybe to connect a router or a switch and then implement SIS. So these are some best practices that you should put into consideration when you are implementing authentication in the network. The first one is you use the same authentication mode and password on all devices, both in the same area and on the interface, on the interconnected interfaces. So remember for the interface mode, you need to use the same passwords or else the peering that just and they will not come up. So always it's a good practice to use the same authentication mode and password across the network. Then another thing that you need to do is you need to use the MD5 or the other mechanisms. The keychain, don't use the plain text mode because that one will be a high risk. A user is, or an attacker is easily, can easily obtain the password that you've configured on the router. You are also recommended to change the password periodically to ensure device security and then you need to implement authentication in the entire network. Don't just do it in a given region or a given part of the network. You implement it end to end from the access to the aggregation to the core so that yeah, your entire network is secured. So these are just some of the best practices that you need to put in consideration when you are implementing uh, authentication in your network so for demonstration we'll be using our aggregation we'll just be doing authentication or we'll be implementing authentication in the core network in the aggregation process that is process 100 only and then the similar process can be used to implement authentication in the access and this is how you are able to configure the interface authentication. So you just need to be in the interface configuration view and then you run the command SIS authentication mode MD5. We remember we are using MD5 and then the password that you are configuring. Remember we are not using plain text. So uh, just to verify that we don't have authentication configured, we'll do a packet capture. On this SG1, if I do display SIS PR, you can see we have SIS PRing with RSG01. So if I do packet capture on this interface, you will realize we don't have any field indicating that we have authentication. So we don't have any authentication at all. Once you configure SIS, it will just come up it will not be checking the authentication parameters. So as you can see, we have all these details in our hello packets, area address, the IS number, IP address, protocol supported, multi-topology, and many, many other details. So we don't have any field that is, that is indicating that authentication is running on this interface. So if we do symbol authentication on this router, uh, it's interface gig 0 slash 0 slash 0 I do SIS authentication mode you can see the option that we have we have keychain, we have MD5 we have symbol so we'll start with symbol but the objective is to use MD5 which is more secure and then I do Huawei hash 2024 so remember when you are doing interface configuration, interface authentication, you need to ensure that you configure similar parameters on the interconnected interfaces or else the SIS adjacency will not come up. So when we do SIS configuration on this interface, remember we have just implemented on one interface, on one side of the interface or the link that is. So we expect the SIS adjacency between SG01 and SG02 and RSG01 should go down because yeah, the authentication parameters are not matching on both ends. So when I do this and I do SIS peer, 
we still have the pairing on RSG1. You can see now we have lost the pairing to RSG1. Why? Because the authentication has been implemented just on one side of the link. So if we wanted to come back and be able to capture packets, we can go into this. We check which interface is connecting the two. We have interface 001. Then I do SIS authentication mode, simple. And I do Huawei hash 2024. So we've implemented authentication on this other part of the ring. And if I display SIS PR, the peering to SG01 is now up. If we check on SG1 again, display SIS PR, you can see the peering to RSG01 is back because yeah, the authentication parameters are now merging and yeah, when they are checking the hello packets, they will be able to authenticate each other and then the peering will come up. If we check the hello packet that we are capturing before, if we now check the ISIS hello packet, you can see we have a field called authentication. And you can see the details, type is 10, length 12. We've used symbols so you can see the password is here. So anyone who can capture packets on the network can be able to obtain all the password that we are using for our SIS. So we are not secure yet with symbol authentication. So that's why we are encouraging the use of MD5, the keychain or the HMAC. So uh, I will now do the configurations with MD5 on RSG1 and RSG2. Then we can be able to verify that yeah, the MD5 password is not visible to the users. So I will start with RSG1. then on SG01 I do the same SG01 it's here quit first then test so if I display ISIS peer I have ISIS peering to RSG01 we don't have to SG02 because we haven't configured there uh, the authentication parameters on SG0 to remember it should be implemented on both ends of the interconnected link. So if we check again the packet that we are getting from between the SG01 and RSG01, you can see that now the authentication field is there and we have MD5 that is implemented and you can see this one is hashed so this is more secure compared to the symbol that we are able to remember up here we had symbol we were able to see the password that is configured let's just go up again we need the hello packets came in so many of them but we can move one step higher Still the same. If I check this, the first one we didn't have authentication, so the topmost one we didn't have authentication. Checking the one with the same authentication, we still not yet there. Move down, down again. This one still not yet because it keeps moving. We capturing so many packets. Yeah, this one was a clear text. Not this one. This is a previous one. Huawei one two three. We need. So as you can see, we are able to. If we have simple authentication, then we are able to see the password. But once you implement 
uh, md5 then you are not able to see the password it's hashed so a hacker a attacker or anyone who is invested in capturing packets on your network maybe sniffing packets on your network will not be able to see those packets the password that you've used so yeah this is how simple it is to implement authentication on ipra network using on huawei devices you just need to go under the interface and then you do sis authentication mode md5 you can mix and match you can use interface authentication together with area authentication but remember the interface authentication will be used because yeah it's the interconnected interface that is establishing sis so yeah you can implement both of them or you can choose to go with one the way we have done and you just implement interface authentication so uh, back to the best practices always use same authentication modes and password on all devices in the same area even on the interfaces and use never use the plain text mode don't use the symbol mode use the hashed modes like you use md5 you use hmark or keychain this one will improve our network security then you need to implement authentication in the entire network not just a section of the network so this is it for how to implement authentication on ipra network and thank you guys for watching please remember to like this video to leave your comments and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.